get to go down. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Um, then I saw the last line in his in his memo, and it, it stated that um, many things capture your eye, um, but few things capture your heart. Pursue those. So I could have talked about uh, my family or skiing or sports or whatever I happen to like that I really get excited about. But I bore the tears out. Of so. What I decided to do was talk about something I enjoy very much um, and that might benefit this group. And that is um, <coughs> driving, driving safely. What I'd like to go over today is how to, I've got two slides here. Tips on car control, also known as a person has to know their limitations and that of their car. Um, we've had a few people in the, at, the, uh, at the plant this year that haven't had real good luck with um, driving and driving safely. We've had a number of accidents. Uh, I can name one mechanic that's had two of them. I can name a couple of operators that have also had uh, issues with their vehicles. Um, What I'd like to do is go over real basic stuff um, and how it can probably help you get out of situations, particularly like in New England, driving um, the icy conditions, the slick conditions, that kind of stuff. Um, but before we start that, you have to know, again, the basics. What can a car do? <coughs> a car can only do three things. It can accelerate, decelerate, and corner. It's the only three things a vehicle can do. Um, when doing any one of those things, all the energy of the vehicle goes to the tires. And when you're at 100% of the tire's capability, say, in accelerating, you're not going to be able to use any of the tire's capabilities on the turning or cornering. Okay? Same with decelerating. If you're 100% on the brakes, you've got to turn the steering wheel, what's going to happen? Straight. It's going to go straight. Exactly. Um, when pop quiz, um, if you were on a bridge in San Francisco when they had the earthquake and the, uh, the bridge fell out from in front of you, what's the quickest way to stop your vehicle? Shut it off. Stop your vehicle from forward oh, motion. Oh. How hard? Back. How hard? Oh, it depends what you have. Basically, if you've got the new brakes, you just got to lay on, and if not, you got to pump it. Right. ABS brakes are horrible. Yeah. Um, just a, a quick fact. If you lock up your vehicle's car, if you slam on the brakes and <coughs> smoke the tires, you're using 30% less braking capability than if you had threshold braking. The threshold braking is and how the hell the heck are you going to measure this? I'm not sure, but it's using um, the, the actual rotation of the, the tire is 5% less than if it was free rolling. Okay, so it's just on the break of squealing. You can hear it squealing, but you're not locked up. That's threshold braking. Um, best way to, 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 to learn how to do this, it depends on vehicles, it depends on, on temperatures, it depends on so many variables, but if you have a car, and, and you're driving it a lot, and you're in you're doing a lot of highway miles or whatever. Um, it doesn't do. A, it's not bad to go out and test it, go out and tr practice this stuff. Um, I've, been, I've gone to parking lots and tried it. Um, I did it in the snow. I did it on dry pavement. I did it on um, uh, wet surfaces. Know the vehicle. Know its capabilities. Know what it can do. Um, the other thing. If you happen to be driving and it's raining out, particularly in the summertime when um, after a nice warm spell it's really hot, all the oils in the, in the road have bubbled up to the top, you've got all that slick stuff going on, um, what you need to do is 
obviously slow down all the you know the normal things, turn your lights on, slow down. What you want to do in the rain is follow the path less traveled. Normally, this would be the, the dark <coughs> section would be where the normal traffic would be on the road. It's the light spot. In the rain, what you want to do is um, sidestep it by about two feet, run in the middle of it. There's gravel in there, there's, it's less slick, it's less smooth, and you'll stand a better chance of keeping control of the vehicle. Okay. The other situation that gets real ugly around here is black ice. And I've done this before. Um, driving on black ice um, on, on roads, fortunately in New England, a lot of our roads don't have curbs or sidewalks or anything like that. What you can do, and what I've done in the past, is actually gone off the road, drop a tire off the road, grab some of that gravel, because you may have black ice on the road, but you're not going to have, it. there'll still be a coating on the rocks and all the debris that's on the side of the road, but at least you'll be able to get some grip out of it. Okay. Um, I've, I've done that all too well. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes not willingly, sometimes not. But I'll tell you what, if, you, if you're getting trouble, the best thing is to drop two tires off. You're guaranteed to have better traction on those two tires than if you'd stayed on the road. Um, cornering. What you don't want to do in cornering, I'll just throw this up, we'll go over it in a minute. What you don't want to do in, in critical situations is upset the vehicle's um, stability. You want to keep it as neutral as possible. You want to be able to um, um, keep the vehicle smooth. You want to, it's, it's like uh, zen. You've got to be zen-like with the vehicle. It's give and take. You jerk the wheel, you're under heavy braking, you jerk the wheel, you're going to go spinning. Um, you hit the gas hard as you're going into a corner and you start spinning, you're going to go all the way around. Um, the best way to go through a turn, or to, to do any kind of driving uh, around a corner, is to go from the outside, hit the apex, and then go to the outside again. It's the smoothest way around, and if you're in the snow situation, or ice, or slick rain, um, that'll get you through it better than if you had just jerked the wheel, and off you go. So three things, once again. Three things a vehicle can do is stop, start, and corner. If things are a couple, couple real ridiculous things, obviously in inclement weather, slow down, uh, leave a greater distance between your cars, all the stuff you've heard in, in driving school and all that stuff. Turn your lights on, um, look in the direction you want to go. If you're in a skidding situation, you look in the direction you want to go. 99% of the time you're going to end up there. If you're looking at a tree, you're going to hit the tree. If you're looking at the road, you got a good chance to stay on the road, unless you're doing at ridiculous speeds and there's no control in the vehicle at all. Um, be aware of the vehicles around you. This happened to me also. Uh, driving into Worcester, there's a big hill going on 290, going into Worcester. Uh, sheet of ice, one of those really nasty days. Sheet of ice. I uh, come to a stop, everything's stopped. Nothing, nobody's going up the hill. I look in my rear view mirror and there's a semi coming. I thought, hmm, I might want to pull over a little bit. So I pulled into the breakdown lane. He took out seven cars. Be aware of the people around you. Uh, there's no telling what kind of ridiculous things are going to do. Just because you know what you're doing, don't go to the assumption that they do. Four wheel drive vehicles. If you want a four wheel drive vehicle, pickup truck, SUV, any of that stuff. You may be able to get from zero to 60 quicker than anybody than a two wheel drive vehicle. You don't go from 60 to zero any quicker. Keep that in mind. You may think you're up in this big thing, but it's not going to stop any quicker than the, the car, little car next to you. Um, also, when you're driving, in, in, particularly in the snow and whatnot, listen to the vehicle. Turn the radio off. If you have passengers, to ask them to be quiet. If you have kids, tell them to be quiet. Um, listen to the RPM of the engine. As you're driving along, you start hearing the RPMs going up, and you don't notice yourself going any faster, you're spinning. Okay, listen to that kind of stuff. Um, engine noise. Um, you can also listen to the tires. Black ice, if you're driving on black ice versus tar, it does make a difference in the sound that the tires make on the road. So as you 
hitting black ice and coming off of it, you'll be able to pick up on that. Uh -huh. And again, what I would what I would highly recommend, especially if you got a vehicle you're gonna have for a while, take it to a parking lot, test it out, test it out in the snow, test it out in the rain, um, make sure there are no cops around, your own property you're allowed to be on. Um, but get to know the vehicle.